chapter 16, reading verses 19 through 24, and also Proverbs 29 and verse 1. Luke 16, verses 19, we'll be starting. And Proverbs 29 and verse 1. It was a few months ago that I was working in uh, Pascagoula, Mississippi, and I was working night shift, and I had to preach on a Sunday morning, and I was trying to get my days and nights turned around, and on a Saturday afternoon, I was taking a nap, and it was almost as if the Lord woke me up. And because uh, for the past few years I've been involved and interested in doing foreign mission work, I've been to Belize twice and into Mexico. I have an open door invitation to go to Africa. I do not believe I'm going to be going, but the door is open. But God had said that I had been preparing myself for the last few years and, and so involved that I thought that's what my calling was, was mission work, foreign missions. And he said that I've been so worried and consumed with trying to go halfway around the world to preach the gospel when there are lost souls right. in my hometown, in my right. home community. Right. There are lost souls even in my local assembly yep. that needs the power of God in their life. They need right. salvation. So my heart began to smoke me, and that was one of the things I needed to, that I felt I needed to start concentrating on. Is, is I, I preach about healing and prosperity, and I preach about encouraging uh, things, but I need to start trying to reach more lost souls. That every time I go to a place to preach, I want to try to reach oh, yeah. a lost soul, because that's what it's all about. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Book of Luke, chapter 19, chapter 16, verses 19. Reads like this, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at the gate full of sores and desiring to be fed of the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked the sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried and by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, somebody say in hell, in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom, and he cried and uh, said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Just one verse of scripture reading in Proverbs 29 and 1, and I'll go ahead and read it. He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. The last part of verse 29, and that without remedy. That is another way of saying you're lost. There's no hope. You're lost. Lord Jesus. Help us tonight, God. I ask that you pray that the conviction of the power of God would come into this place. Lord, yes, Jesus. God, rather, I can just be able to minister the word and reach just one lost soul. It will be worth this message. I pray in the name of Jesus that you have the spirit of conviction. Prayer warriors, pray for a spirit of conviction that come into this house. Not a spirit of condemnation, but a spirit of conviction to be able to convict the hearts of the people. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would have your way. God, I ask that you would help me to be able to reach just one lost soul that is dying lost, hopeless without you. God, I pray tonight that someone would be touched, that someone would feel the power and the conviction spirit of Jesus Christ. And let everybody say amen. 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 You may be seated tonight. Praise the, Lord. Praise the, Lord. the great physician of heaven has been dealing with the minds and hearts and the souls of men and women for a long time. Oh, yes. He has worked with them on their dying beds and in their spiritual dying conditions for a very long time. The saddest thing that I can think of, it would be God telling the preacher and, and assuring his fire and assuring that there is a hell that burns with fire and assuring that there is a heaven. And God says that he has done all that he can do towards reaching one lost soul. For the high position of heaven to turn and shake his head and say, I've done all I can do, turning away and throwing his instruments on the table behind him. <coughs> and say, there is no remedy. In other words, to say you're lost. Lord Jesus, help us, Lord. I wish 
that had the power to be able to completely do away with that word lost. That word lost to me is so haunting and so afraid. When, when I was younger, I was going hunting in the woods of Honey Island Swamp. And I got so deep into the woods that when it started getting evening time that the trees had, uh, the limbs had overshadowed the sun and the clouds had moved in and it was about to rain and, and I couldn't see which direction the sun was and I didn't know about the sounding of cars. I couldn't hear it in any place where I might be and I was lost in the woods of Honey Island the Swamp. Even though that I had a weapon with me, I still began to get fearful. The later it got and the sun began to go down on me, I began to get afraid and pray God, I do not want to be lost in the woods when the sun goes down on me today. Friendly, being lost with God is so shallow to being lost in the woods. If you're lost, dying without God, you're on your way to hell. And I'm trying to pull you out of the grass of the place tonight to let you know that Jesus cares for you. And I care for you. And I love you. And I want you to be saved. But the devil is pulling for each and every one of us to be lost. He may be sitting on a pew here tonight and you're filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm about to bust your, your, your tradition of what you think. Just because you're filled with the Holy Ghost and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and preaching does not mean that I'm saved. That's right. We're striving for perfection. Right. We're not right. saved until we get to heaven. That's and he right. says, enter thou in thy good and faithful servant and those perfect gates closed behind you. I don't, I don't know what you've been taught, but we're not saved until we make it into heaven. We're striving for perfection. We're trying to do everything we can to be saved. But there are chances that we may fail, that we may fall. 